I love you, Dad. 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 Your arms are my shelter, assuring me that it will be better. Your hand is my comfort, lifting me up when I fall short. Your voice makes me jump. Teaching me what's right and wrong. Your smile says it all, Father. I love you more than all. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. Happy Father's Day! We love you, Dada. Happy Father's Day! Your arms are my shelter. My arm is my shoulder. Your smile says it all. Happy Father's Day to you all, and I just love seeing. I love seeing our kids. Uh, come together like that. And for all of you, uh, I just want to say again, happy Father's Day to you. And always remember this, we have a Father in heaven who is perfect, who loves you more than anything, loves you more than anyone on this earth could possibly love you. And he is looking at you right now with love in his eyes. He loves you. He cares for you. And so on this Father's Day, let's give it up for our Heavenly Father because he is worth it. Amen. Come on, let's go. God, thank you so much for being our perfect father. So welcome to church, everybody. It's so good to be back in the house. Week number two, week number two of being back together again. I just love it. I love seeing all of your smiling faces, and I'm so glad that we can still do online. Um, but online, I don't need to wear one of these. Don't worry, I'm not going to preach like this. That would be super creepy, I think. So I'm just going to wear it down here. and It matches my shirt. So I'm just going to chalk it up to outfit sense. I got good outfit sense with this bandana right here with the with the palm trees and the bandana and the little bracelet. I feel like I'm on vacation right now. I don't know about y'all, but I'm feeling like summer is here and I'm feeling good about it. So it is awesome to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, somebody maybe joining us online or any of you here that don't have, haven't had the chance to I haven't had a chance to meet you yet. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I, who is sitting outside with the kids, have the privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. And give it up for yourselves because you are amazing church. And then church is the people. Our mission here is to be a lifeline by leading people into becoming lifelong Jesus followers. I believe whether you're watching online right now or whether you're here in person, I believe you're not here by accident. But God himself has drawn you to be here today because he has a message of hope, encouragement, and love that he wants to speak into your life today. Amen. Come on, say amen with me because amen means let it be done and it activates our faith. And so I believe God has something really good for you today. Amen. Let that be done. So this series that we're in is called With Liberty and Justice for All. You might uh, remember that saying that pledge every single day. If you went to school, uh, you remember standing up and doing the Pledge of Allegiance that states with liberty and justice for all. One nation under God. And this is the part I'm hoping for through this series, indivisible. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. With liberty and justice for all. We introduced this last week by, by talking about not wanting to be colorblind. It was, a, it was a message called Colorblind. If you missed it, check it out. Last week, was, it was a good day, and we talked about how diversity can be a challenge at times, but it is better. It's something we need to push for. It's something we need to strive for. If we're not seeing diversity in different places of our life, there is something to be gained to try for it, to go for it. Diversity isn't always easier, but it is always better. It's the way that we want to live our life. Not being colorblind, not ignoring and choosing to be ignorant about differences in others. That's what that message was about. So basically, you don't need to watch anymore. I just told you. I just told you what the whole thing was about. But you can go back and check it out. And next week, next week, we're going to be talking about um, the diverse church. And Tiffany's going to bring that up. But this series is based off this scripture, Proverbs 31 says this, speak up 
for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and the helpless. See that they get justice. See, here, here at Lifeline, this, this is part of our language. This is part of our cultural language here at this church. We make the first move to meet people where they are. Where they are. Now, that's usually an evangelistic stance. Like, we're going like to break down barriers. We're going to do different things to try and reach people where they're at because that's our job. We're going to go to every nation and make disciples of all, of all nations. We're going to go. We're going to go and do that. So we are going to seek to bring change. We don't follow culture. We create it. It's up to us. We have the option. We have the choice to create the culture that, that surrounds us. We go the extra mile to see liberty and justice brought to a hurting world. We are the church. We are essential, and we will not stand by to be shaped by our surroundings, which is so easy to do. It's so easy to let our surroundings pressure us, corral us, point us in the direction that, that our surroundings want us to go. But no, we, we will not stand by and be blown to and fro by every wind that comes our way, by everything that comes our way. No, we're going to choose to be the change. We're going we're gonna to say for ourselves where we choose to go and how we choose to get there. We will be the change and we will be a lifeline. So if you missed last week, you, you definitely want to hear all the parts of this. Um, and it was called Colorblind, don't miss it. Next week, Pastor Tiffany is gonna be bringing the word and she's gonna be talking about being a diverse church. And that, that woman, my wife, that woman, she has seen many diverse churches. She spent time overseas as a missionary and she's seen a thing or two and knows a thing or two about being a diverse church and the blessing that comes from that. Remember last week, we talked about in Revelation that every nation and every tongue would be standing before the throne praising God in the end. So why don't, we, why don't we try and emulate that? If that's what heaven's gonna look like, and it doesn't look like that here, then what can we do about that? And Tiffany's gonna, Tiffany's gonna help us, um, give us, some, give us some, some shades and some color and some shape to what that can look like for us. But there's something that we need to tackle before we get there. There's something that we need to tackle, and it's very, very important. Because it, it's come to my attention that um, in our culture, in our world, that we no longer know how to disagree with one another. It's become clear to me that we've lost a baseline sense of respect for one another. And before we can, we can decide to be a diverse church, before we can decide to step into the future that we would have for ourselves, we have got to learn this. We've got to learn how to agree to disagree. We, we've got to learn how to disagree with each other. We've got to learn how to respectfully and with honor not always share the opinion of others. Now, I know you don't always share the opinion of others. That, I mean, because it's like all you see, as far as the eye can see, is people fighting with each other. I absolutely hate it. I hate it. I am an anti-conflict kind of guy. That's who I am. I tend to see conflict and go, yeah, I think they were calling me over there because I see what you're talking about and I'm out of here. I hate it. I don't like it one bit. But one, one time, I just want to bring this down to earth. Um, before I got saved and before I got clean, um, it was close to, it wasn't quite 20 years ago. Um, I think it was right around 18 years ago, I was heading to an abortion clinic um, and it was, it was for me and my partner. And we were going there to it would have been my first child. Um, I think about it. I think about it from time to time. Father's Day brings it up again for me. There was a group of people at this abortion clinic that we went to. It was in uh, Sacramento because I lived in Yuba City, and I, we traveled to Sacramento to, to do the thing. And when we got there, there was a crowd of people there. And me and my, at the time, partner, remember, unsaved, not clean, I was living a, you know, rock star life, and I was all over the map, and, you know, so please keep that in context, <laughs> uh, I'm saved now, <laughs> it's been a long time, we got there, the group is there, and, but they weren't yelling, they weren't shouting, you know, I can remember that they were not, they were not impolite, I just remember there was a crowd of people in the parking lot, and they were there, and we go in, and um, 
the person I was with goes in to have the thing, and I smoke cigarettes at the time. And so I'm waiting in the waiting room to decide I'm going to go have a cigarette. So I go outside. And I'm outside in the parking lot of this abortion clinic with this group of people uh, waiting out there. And this one gentleman, he walks up to me, and he just strikes up a conversation. He, he, I don't remember him ever yelling. He never raised his voice. But he, he asked me, how you doing today? <laughs> I wasn't doing that great that day. Um, pretty numb. You know, I wasn't thinking about much of anything. And so I told him, I'm, like, I'm doing fine. And he said, is that, uh, is that your girlfriend going in there? I said, yeah, that's my girlfriend going in there. And he, he said, have you ever thought about just leaving and going home and not going through with this? And, you know, it was, it was such, a, such an honest question, you know. It was so unaccusatory that I just felt like answering. I said, well, you know, I thought about it, but I don't have a job and, you know, I'm, I'm not in a really great place. And so I, I didn't think, you know, and she's already in there, so it's too late. And he looks at me and says, it's not too late. You can go in there. And that would have been my oldest, my oldest child. And I didn't, I didn't go in there. But I remember, the, I remember the conversation so clearly because there was so much love coming from this man. There was so much compassion coming from this man. He really, he didn't want to take, his goal, I could, I, hindsight, I'm looking back at this. He didn't, he didn't need to tell me I was wrong. But he knew something I didn't. And his goal and motive were pure. And he just wanted to share with me, hey, have you thought about, have you thought about not? Have you thought about what he or she might be like? Have you thought about what he or she might do? I got to move on. This is too much. But I'm betting there's people in your life that disagree with the choices you're making and the things that you stand for. And they want to let you know it. Has this become real yet? <laughs> they want to let you know. But they may not be treating you the way that this gentleman in my story was treating me. And there's people that you disagree with. And you want to let them know it. We have to understand that there is a right way and a wrong way to share our point of view with someone. 100% absolutely Take that to the bank. There is a right way and a wrong way. It's called speaking the truth in love. It's called speaking the truth in love. And you can do it wrong, absolutely. Here's the big problem we face in our society. Everybody thinks they're right, including you, including me. We, we all think we're right. Now, can that really be true? Man, you're right about what you're, and they think they're right, man, it's all the time. Where does that leave us? Not in a very good spot. Not in a very good spot. Don't worry, everybody. Things are going to look up from this point in the message. It's going to be, it's going to all uphill from here. It's all good. <laughs> you guys, I'm, it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be all right. We've all made mistakes, and we can all move forward from those mistakes and still see a lot of good things happen in our life. Because it's not always life and death, you know? It's not always like make or break these huge, big things. I actually had someone uh, when I it was probably like probably two or three years ago, two or three years ago, right here in this church, and it was around Christmas time. Because sometimes it's just people on the internet that want to bother you. You ever had anybody like that? Don't say yes. <laughs> I know, some of you are watching on the internet right now. You got one tab open, and then the other tab, you heckling somebody right now. Just stop it right there. Stop it. You, it's being a troll. You, does anybody know what a troll is? A troll is a creature that lives under a bridge, and when you walk over that bridge, they come out and, and, and gargle obscenities at you. And they, they come out and they do troll things at you as you go over your path. That's what a troll is. So an internet troll would be a person that is, you're just minding your own business, walking along. And the next thing you know, they pop up from underneath the platform right there. Hey, what makes you think you can walk right there? But well, I don't know, man. I'm not sure. I just was walking here. It's a troll, all right? Hashtag don't be a troll. No, that's not, that, we're not going to keep that. But there was a person, I was minding my own business on, on my 
on my internet, you know, doing my own social media thing. And we're at the church and we were, we were decorating for Christmas. And we had the lights and we had the, we had little baby Jesus over here. It was beautiful. Okay. We had, we had the Christmas tree right there. And somebody, somebody, a friend of mine, they, 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 they chime in and they, they say, what makes you think you can have that Christmas tree there? That is anti-Christ. And I was like, are you sure? Because I'm not so sure. It's like, you know, okay, it could be one thing, it could be the other, but it was just some person came along and we don't even hardly know each other. You know, I'm a pastor, okay? And so a lot of people meet me and they're like, oh, we're friends and I'm fine with that. We can be friends, but we did, this person didn't really know me. I didn't really know them. I don't even think we met face to face, but they started this argument online with me about Christmas trees. And I'm like, well, it's one of the first time I got trolled. And I'm like, this is, this is weird. This is weird. I'm not sure. I'm like, should I, should I prove that he's wrong? Should I, should I just delete? Should I, but it's, it's kind of a nightmare. If, if you've ever been through it, it's kind of just awful. Nobody wants to deal with it. It's just like, man, would you please just mind your own business? Honestly, like mind your own business. Or if you have something to say to me, at least talk to my face about it. You know, I don't even know you. Mind your, mind your own business. I'm fencing right now. Okay, Woo, we're gonna pull that back. But to bring it back to the season that we're in, this is very, very important because we see a lot of this right now. This is prevalent. This is actually commonplace. Something that used to be rare is now commonplace. And people feel like I need to do this. But if we want diversity in our life, if we want a culture of honor and mutual respect, liberty and justice for all, we have to know how to do this right. We have to know how to disagree appropriately with one another because there is a right and a wrong way, both with you disagreeing with others and people disagreeing with you. If we don't learn how to do this, Racism will never get dealt with. N no problem that we need to actually have a dialogue talk about will ever get dealt with correctly if we don't know how to disagree with one another appropriately. It's so important. It's so important. And it's, it's a bigger picture issue than just the season we're in because this season it's this, another season it'll be that. But we need to understand this. This is at the root. This is at the root of how we're gonna get past this. If we don't learn Diversity won't be produced and cultivated because disagreements will prevent it. Disagreements will prevent diversity from happening. Turn your Bibles to Matthew 7. If you have a smartphone, you can jump on the YouVersion Bible app and you can look up Lifeline Church and you can follow along that way. Matthew 7, we're going to go through verses 1 through 6. Verses 1 through 6 says, do not judge others and you will not be judged. This is Jesus talking. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And some people walking around life like they're not scared of being judged at all. They're like, bring it on. I'm above reproach, so I am just going to let you know how you're wrong. You want to know something crazy? You want to know something true? The truest thing right now is you don't want my job. <laughs> you absolutely, positively, if you ever thought about being a pastor, I want you to second guess that right now. It's a calling, not a profession, and it's a, it's a calling I've gotta to commit to right now, because I can do nothing right right now. I am either too black or too white, I am either too red or too blue, I am either too hot or I am either too cold. I want to tell everyone here, but also everybody listening online, if this is not your church and you have a pastor that you submit to, that you know, that you love, I want you to send them a text today telling them you love them, telling them you, you just are so grateful for them because a pastor's job and any other kind of leader in that world, they are going through it right now. There is, <laughs> thank you for that. Somebody, somebody's giving me some love right now, and I, I appreciate that in the back. Thank you. Send them some love. Tell them how much you appreciate them, because right now there is, it's a very small, razor-thin way that you cannot be criticized for anything right now. And some people don't even, they've never even read this scripture before. 
The standard you use for judging is the standard. Are you ready to be judged in full, harshly, the way we're judging people right now? The way we're judging people online? We're judging their whole life, who they are, their whole character, based on what they clicked like on. It's not right. It's not fair. That's not even Christian. Read your book. <laughs> I'm an encouraging guy. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't talk like that. I really don't. See for yourself the way Jesus talks about this. The standard you use for others is the standard that will be used on you. Some of you, it's, ready, it's time to pump the brakes on some of this stuff right now. We need to learn this. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own. This is my favorite log in my eye position right here. I, this is what we got in our eye, and we're like, look at you. You can't say that. You can't do that. You're not doing enough. You're not saying enough. You're doing too much. You're saying too much. And we're like, how can you even see right now? That's crazy. It's not right. It's not right. It's not the way God asks us to treat each other. It's not the way. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own? And then he says this, hypocrite, which is Jewish for burn. <laughs> hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. That's the key. That's how I'm going to teach you the rest of the day. That is the key principle, and I'm going to put it in a different way so that you can understand a little bit better, I hope. But it says, first get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see clear enough to get rid of the speck in your friend's eye. And then it says this. This seems off topic, but it's not. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs or your pearls unto swine, if that's how you read your Bible. They will trample the pearls. They will turn and they will attack you. Basically, simply put, there, there is a limit to what you have to put up with when it comes to other people. You, there is a limit. There is a place where you can say, you know what? I, I'm done. I can't do anymore. I can't. Jesus says, you don't have to. You're, you're, you're trying. You're throwing your pearls out there. You're, you're doing what is holy, and you're trying your best to, to, to remove the log out of your eye so you can see clearly the speck. And then right after that, he says, but don't waste what is holy on what is unholy. If this person want, if that's all they want is to fight with you, then you can knock the dust off your feet. That's what Jesus used to tell missionaries when he sent them into town. Just knock the dust off your feet as a symbolic way to say, you know what? I'm done. I can't. I tried. I tried. And with no malice, I am just done. I cannot continue to, to be in, involved in this. Very powerful verse. But this is, what, this is what it boils down to. That verse 5, get rid of the log in your own eye, then you'll see well enough. I want you to remember this. Learn to disagree agreeably. Learn, learn to disagree agreeably <clears throat> with humility. <laughs> How many rhymes can I do in one statement? Learn to disagree agreeably with humility. That's the key. What if we could flip the script around of what we're seeing right now and stopped beating people over the head with our opinions and share our point of view from a place of humility? Do you think that would change things? Do you think that would change the temperature of the conversation, if you want to call it that? It's really a knockdown, drag out that you're in. But what if we could stop long enough to have some humility in our life to share our point of view from a place of humility. It's called disagreeing agreeably. And this is what the world has no idea what to do right now. This is the, the world has no clue that this verse exists. The world has no clue that this is something of value and of virtue, humility. God opposes the proud and shows favor to the humble. How much more in this season will he show favor to those of us? And in the church, we've got to get this right. We've got to get this right. Hey, this is important in your marriage. This is important in your family. This is important in the church. This is important in life. I don't know about you, but when someone's screaming in my face, I tend to want to punch theirs. You, I used to. I used to. Okay, I'm a new man now. I don't do that anymore. But don't push me. But I would never do it. 
but don't test me. I'm just saying. But when someone comes to me and says, you know, I, I could be off about this. You see that precursor? You know, I, I, could, I could be way off. I might be jumping out on a ledge here. But I've been thinking about what you said, did, posted, et cetera, et cetera. I could be way off, but I, I want to share this. It's, it's so different than I'm going to find the most sarcastic meme and I'm going to get them and they're going to see it and they're going to be destroyed. You're destroyed right now. Did you see that meme? It was so mean. <laughs> no, no. Like come to a person and talk to them and say, you know what? I just, I want to understand where you're coming from, but I also want you to, to let you know something because people don't care what you know. This is a tiffism. Tiffany coined this term for me. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. So if you care about them actually having and running with the information you have, you better start with that. You better start with showing people that you care about them. Because when, when I don't take a lot of advice from people who hate me. I don't take a lot of advice from people that come screaming in my face. Do you? No, you don't. I'll answer that for you. That's, let's put it another way. Let's put this another way that actually helps us stay humble. People don't care what you think you know. Because <laughs> that's the truth. It's, it's a strong opinion. Unless you're just reading the Bible to somebody with no explanation at all, just reading it to them. Because the Bible is infallible, never wrong, always always true, sharp as a double-edged sword. If you're just reading the Bible to them, verse 6, and just say it, but as soon as you start interpreting, you need to understand. You need to understand that you're venturing into opinion. You're venturing into opinion. I'm not saying you can't decipher what the Bible means. It's, it's not hard. Anybody can do it. Everybody can do it. Thank God for the Reformation, and we've got Bibles, and we can, and we can decipher what they mean. But all I'm saying is, Start from a place of this is what I strongly think I know. And my goal is not to bash you. My goal is I, I want this to help you. And if that's not your goal, well, then you're kind of dead in the water already. Dead in the water already. Have you ever been in an argument with someone? Ra raise your hand. Everybody, whoever has been in an argument, show me your hand. Go ahead. Liar, liar, liar. Everybody who did not raise their hand, I'm just kidding. I would never say that to you. I didn't just say that, did I? Everyone online, I thought this would be funny. Everyone online, post the face emoji that most closely resembles your last fight and argument you got in. <laughs> I thought that would be hilarious. I'm going to check too. I'm gonna, after this is all done, I'm going to come and check. But post the little face emoji that describes the last fight you got in. Go ahead and, and do that. Because we've all been in fights. We've all been in arguments. But when's the last? Here's my question, though. As you're doing that, when's the last time you got won over? When's the last time someone convinced you because someone was mean to you and talked down to you? Show of hands. It's a little dark in here. No, no, hold on. Wait. No. Mm, no. It, it, yeah. The last time someone, like, talked down to you like you didn't even know what you were talking about and you're so dumb, let me tell you, because you're so, you're not, you're so uninformed and you were like, oh, oh, okay, sweet, got it. Yep, won't do that again. Never, ne never. It's like we lost sight of the goal. It's never happened that I'm aware of. Like maybe it's happened once or twice out of a billion, but I've never seen it, never heard of it. Doesn't happen that way. Best case scenario, if that happened to you, someone talking down at you, someone's being mean at you, someone's hitting you with a li their list of facts, demeaning you, accusing you of not being well informed enough. Best case scenario, you pretended to go along with it because you were tired of getting your feelings hurt. Probably. That's like best case scenario. You just rolled over and said, you know what? I can't even, they will trample those pearls and, and trample you as well. And worse, you don't even speak to them anymore. Be worst case scenarios. I just can't even deal with them. I can't even talk with them anymore. You know what? It's, it's really sad, but you know how as I was saying, you know, encourage a pastor. You know, I, I was on the phone with a lot of people this last week. Um, 
Some of them were hyphy at me, um, but I was also on the phone with, with other pastors in our, in our valley. And, and some pastors, man, they're dealing with things and people being so mean to them, so mean to them. It's just not right. Man, why, where did we think as Christians, like these are Christian on Christian people, where, where did we learn we could treat each other like that? We, have, we are being led by the bit to treat each other like trash, and it's not right. And I'm talking to my friend, you know, a pastor. I'm talking about like, hey, man, it's, it's all right. I dealt with some of that too, man. You're going to be okay. You're doing a great job. I'm like just trying like, because I know how it feels. It feels bad. Someone that you're pouring your life into, someone that you study all week to show yourself approved and to help them, and then they turn around and attack you. It's it's, it's, it's disastrous, and it's a bad witness. It's just everything bad about it, everything bad about it. And this is the way we like to, this is the way we like to fight these days. Simply put, if you, if you have a Facebook account, man, I wouldn't even be mad at you for deleting it right now because this is what, this is all we see. Oh, hold on, that's not strong enough. You're wrong. I'm, I'm right, you are wrong. I'm right. You're wrong. These are the only two. It's time for us to put the sign down. Stop it. Just let's stop with all that. Can we? Just the people here listening to the sound of my voice. How about we just commit right now that we're not going to do business that way anymore. That we're not going to conduct ourselves that way anymore. I'm choosing right here, right now, making a commitment to do these next three things I'm going to explain to you and not just tell people they're wrong anymore because I care about the outcome. If you care at all about the outcome, you'll listen to the rest of what I have to say. If your goal is to just smash them and prove that they're wrong, then I would ask you to double check your relationship with the Lord because you can't hate your brother and love the Lord. The Bible says it. I don't even have to explain it. It's right there. You can't have hate and malice for your brother and then claim to have love and adoration for the Lord. It's not, it's not possible. Get that. It's yelling at me right now. It's telling me I'm wrong right now. I'm like, get that thing out of here. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. This is what I want us to do. Love first, speak second. Love first and speak second. I heard this statement. I heard this statement recently that if you will wash somebody's feet, you might find out where they've been and why they were there if you will take the time to wash their feet. Now, if you're not familiar with the Bible very much or, or with uh, old Hebrew culture or just old time culture, really, it's not even locked into that, but washing someone's feet was a very humble act reserved for servants. And this is something that Jesus did in the Bible with his disciples, and they took offense to it at first. They were like, no, no, you are Lord. You can't do this. You can't wash my feet. That's what I should be doing for you. But Jesus was trying to prove a point to his disciples. This is what I want you to do for one another. I want you to wash each other's feet. And by saying that, he meant I want you to serve and love and get low. Get low with all that knowledge. Get low with all that self-proclaimed wisdom. Get low with all of that. I know what we ought to be doing and I know what everybody should be doing. Do this, do that. Get humble. And the person you're trying to lead and teach, wash their feet. Wash their feet. If you can find a way to show kindness, if you can find a way to show kindness, your chances of having a wonderful outcome increases greatly. The next thing I want you to do is this. And this is real hard, but I want you to seek first to understand, then to be understood. This is much harder than it sounds. And I had the opportunity to put this into practice this week. I was done with my message and, you know, one of the many phone calls, you know, having with me, and the opinions are coming in. And I was like, okay, okay. Let me, let me try and understand first, before, before I share my point of view, because isn't that the first thing on our mind? Isn't that the first thing we want to do? Let me tell you why you're wrong and I have it all right here. So let me tell you. No, no, no. The, the one thing we want to do is we want to seek first to understand and say, let me help you, let me help myself understand your point of view. Because if I can understand where you're coming from and show you my vulnerability in that, 
then maybe, just maybe, you'll listen to my point of view. But I will at least start by wanting to understand. This term was coined by uh, the great Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey wrote a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I did not come up with this one. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People sounds like a self-help book. It's not. It's actually very Christian and not about self-help at all. It's about really being selfless in, in these seven different ways. This is number four or five or something. But it's seek first to understand. And there's a vulnerability that comes with Let me just su- try and summarize it. Successful people, and this is what successful people do. I'm, I'm talking wealthy. I'm talking the people that we, the, 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 the definition of the term set on the onset of the book, the beginning of the book, successful people being self-actualized, you know, living their best life or whatever. These people, they don't seek first to be understood. The first thing they want to do is they want to understand you. They want to understand you. Wow, what would change in our life? What would change in our society if every single one of us, our first instinct was, I want to understand you. I want to understand your perspective. (laughs) Man, sometimes just thinking about it is hard to do. And it is hard to do. When you're on the phone or you're face to face with someone and they're saying things and you are like, oh, you're so wrong right now. You are so wrong right now. It takes every, every bit of your being to to be quiet. And then when they're done talking, to go, okay, now let me see if I understand you correctly. And don't say something sarcastic at that time. You know how, you know how we do, husbands, you know. Ladies, you too, we all do it. So what you're saying is, I'm a big dummy, and you don't like me. No, no, actually try to, re- to say back what they said to you, and to understand it fully. And say back to them so that their response will be, yeah, that is what I'm saying. Then you've understood them. And you've shown them that you understand their point of view. At that point, you can say, okay, that, that makes sense. I understand what you're saying. Now let me share, can, can I share with you what I was thinking? And it is tough. But if you can do this, it could change everything. It's, it sounds simple. It's difficult. But we can do this. We can do this, everybody. And the last thing I want you to do is this. I want you to value relationship over victory. Value relationship over victory. If victory and winning the argument is your goal, you've lost already. You've lost already. If your goal is to win, stop. Stop right there. If your goal is to win this argument, stop right there. Because you won't. You won't win. You may win the argument, but you'll lose your chance. You'll lose your chance to minister to that person. You'll lose your chance to have relationship that can transcend disagreements with that person. If your goal is, you can be right and wrong all at the same time. You can be right and wrong all at the same time. So what I want you to do, remember this. Learn to disagree agreeably. Learn to disagree agreeably. It's so important, everybody, and it's something that we need to understand will always stand in the way of life-giving relationships. It will always stand in the way of us wanting to have diversity in our world. It will always stand in the way of us wanting to get better in any aspect of our life, truly. We need to understand right here and right now that you will not always agree with people that you love. But there is a right way and a wrong way to disagree with them. And the mo- I would say one of the most important places to do this is in your marriage, if you're married, in your marriage. What if we could apply these things to, a, to our, our marriage relationships? Yeah, someone who's gonna be uh, your spouse. So these, these really ultra important, in your family, in your family. What if I could seek first to understand? What if I could get over my pride enough? What if we could get over ourselves long enough to say, you know what? I'll I'll listen to you. I think I know I'm right, but I'm going to listen to you anyways. We need to do this in our marriage. We need to do this in the church with each other. And in every volatile situation, like the ones we're in now in our world. 
It's not, it's not just in America, it's in our world. There's more division now than many of us have ever seen in our lives. I've never seen anything like, I'm a 35 year old man, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. It's time for the church to buckle down. It's time for the church to, to, to rise up and get above all of that pride stuff. Get above all that need to be right all the time. Look, we know we have the truth in the Word of God, but could we get over ourselves long enough to present it in such a way that isn't condescending? If our goal is to actually bring people in, then why would we trample them? we do that? Why would we do that in our marriage? Why would we do that in our family? I want you to imagine a world. Imagine a world where we could share our opinions without hurting one another. It just needs to start right here because it can, it can be true in your world. In your world, this can be true. That I will not hurt people on my way to truth. I will not step on people to give them my, my version of the truth. Even if you are 100% right, there's a right way and a wrong way to be right. What if we could see this in our families? What if we could see this in our churches? What if we could see this in the San Joaquin Valley? What if we could see this in California? What if we could see this across the nation, across the world? Do you think do you think things would be different? Do you think there'd be less violence? Do you think there'd be less hatred? Do you think there'd be less division? More harmony, more love? I, I believe so. If we would just put these things into practice, love first, speak second. Seek first to understand. If we could do these things, we can see a change. To be quite honest, it's, it's not even possible to love this way if we haven't received the source of this kind of love found in Jesus Christ. And I know that some of us here, we, listen, I, I know what age we're living in. I know how things are. I, I'm so glad that some of us have been able to, to join us and, and many of you are only joining us online for safety reasons and we're, feel, we're more isolated than ever right now. I know some of us are feeling so lonely. Some of you are feeling so lonely and isolated right now. And you're so devoid of love. You feel like you're on an island all alone. And you can see people sailing by, but you can't. I'm here. You can't shout them loud enough. I want to tell you that there is hope in Jesus right now. There is hope in Jesus that if we would renew our relationship with him, or put our faith in him for the very first time that he can turn that thing around and that hopelessness that despair Jesus can replace that with love hope and encouragement that's that's the message truly can we adopt God's kind of love in our heart I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me everyone listening online and everyone in the house everyone sitting outside Father, in the name of Jesus, we're grateful and thankful for your word that teaches us what's true and what's right. And right now, we're grateful for your spirit among us. We can, we can tell that something is different in this moment because your presence is among us. And I ask for clarity of heart and mind for every single person listening to the sound of my voice, wherever they may be. we would receive your love and we would renew our relationship with you or start one fresh so with heads down and eyes closed if there is anyone here in the house or outside and also listening online if you would like to renew your relationship with Jesus and put him back at the center of your life because you've gotten a little off course you know things aren't where they should be and you want to put your hope, your faith, and your trust in Jesus. 
I want you to indicate that just by, just by putting your hand up and saying, that's me. I want to put Jesus back at the center of my life. If that's you, and just let it be known. Let it be known. Online, just put a little hand up there in the comments. We'll get to you. And anyone here, amen. Praise God. You are seen by the Father. Amen. I see you. Amen. I see you. Father, I ask right now. In fact, let's pray this together. Heads down, eyes closed. Just repeat this prayer after me. If you believe this in your heart, pray this out. Father God, I welcome you into my life. I put you at the center of all things. Forgive me of my sins. Make me new. Fill me with your spirit. And show me the way to go. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate with those that made that decision today? Come on, everybody. They're celebrating in heaven and it's loud. And they're celebrating right here. I don't know if they can hear you online, but online they are cheering for you too. Those of you who made that decision and those of you in-house that made that decision, we're so grateful, so grateful. And our desire truly is, like Adam was saying, we want to connect, honestly. That's like the number one thing like we can do in this season right now with people being separated, people being disconnected. Like I know it's not normal. You know, you look around, you know it's not exactly normal right now. People are watching online a lot and all this. So we're kind of redefining what it is to win here at the church. And our win is to really just be connected with you. We just want to start a conversation with you and, and, and have an ongoing relationship with you so we can support you when you need it, pray for you when you need it. And so to be clear, if you made that decision or if you made that decision recently, or if you're just new around here, there is a link in the description to fill out a connection card and there's connection cards in the seat back of all these seats. Please fill one out and put them in the connection box, in the, in the back, the giving and connection box so that you can receive all the relationship that is waiting for you in the body of Christ. We want to give that to you freely. And, and we, we try to go above and beyond to give that away. This is also the time in our service um, to do some giving. So you can text 84321 to give any amount. There's a giving box in the back, like Adam said. It's that little discreet box by the doors. Online, you can smash that that donate button on Facebook, or you can just go to our website or mail it into 500 Park Street. And finally, there's Growth Track. You know, there's still team serving. If you'd like to sing, play instruments, if you want to help be a part of this greeter team that puts together everything, you know, outside and makes sure services are happening, or maybe you have some technology insight, you want to be on our ever-expanding social media team, you can be a part of any of those teams and just learn more about what it means to be a part of a church family. You can do that in our growth track. It happens in person here, in the back room, right back there, directly after service, or you can follow the link to, to, to join the life group and do it via Zoom. Let me pray for you right now. Come on, everybody, let's all stand to our feet today. Let's stand to our feet. I wanna pray a blessing over you um, online. This goes for you as well. I may not be looking directly into the camera for this, but I want you to know this is for you as well and for everyone here and for you, young lady, right here on the front row, my front row supporter. I got one. Yeah. This is like the splash zone right here. I'm like preaching really hard and it's getting all splashy. You're like, oh my goodness gracious. I can't even right now. I want to pray this blessing over you in this time where there's a lot of division out there. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of pain. I understand that. But I want you to walk out of this place and I want you to leave this, this message feeling hope, feeling encouragement, and feeling loved because that is God's heart for you. Ultimately, it is. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every single person here that they would be filled to the brim and to overflowing with your spirit, your presence, your goodness, your faithfulness, your love, your encouragement. Lord, I pray over every relationship represented in this room and listening online. Lord, that we would put you at the center of all of our relationships lean in, that we would lean in to every relationship you've graced us with and that we would save uh, relationships that are on the, the, the brink of disaster because of maybe just some bad choices, Lord, that we would recenter, refocus 
and focus on, on putting you at the center and being humble in every single one of our relationships. And that goes for every marriage. That goes for every uh, parent and, and child relationship. That goes for every friendship. Lord, that we would put you at the center. Lord, I pray over the finances of the church as things are shaken but not stirred. <laughs> right now. We stand firm in you, God. We know that every single blessing comes from you and you alone, and we're so grateful for that. Lord, we trust you with our finances. We put you at the center, and we're looking for ways actively to bless you, God, and to bless others and to bless the church. And as we do that, we know that your blessing is going to come forth, and we know that we'll have just what we need in Jesus' name. And I pray, lastly, for the health of the church. Lord, as we're struggling and dealing with illnesses and people passing away and, and people being hospitalized, Lord, we would never make light of something like that, but we're choosing to stand firm and believe in faith that you have us, that, 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 your, that your protection will be over us. And the, Lord, I ask for supernatural grace over us as we do our best to, to, uh, to submit and to go along with guidelines, but also trust in you. We're trusting in you, God. And we're putting our faith in you as we follow our leaders and as we, as we lean into your word and know that you are our healer. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for God because he's good. Amen. Growth Track is happening in 10 minutes and we hope to see you there. God bless you and we will see you very soon.